In this film, we'll be looking into a couple of the problems you might have while using T-splines inside Inventor. Let's begin by having a look at this first freeform I've put together to demonstrate non-manifold surfaces inside Inventor. By default, Inventor 2015 gives us manifold T-spline surfaces. Manifold just means that the surface is completely watertight, there are no gaps. This surface is ready to be turned into a NURBS solid model. Inventor 2015 doesn't support straight surface modeling with T-splines. So this means in general, it's pretty hard to make non-manifold geometry inside Inventor. This is pretty robust. But you can do it, and I want to show you how. In this case, I've got a basic rectangular T-spline surface, and I've created symmetry around the center. You can see slightly grayer lines indicating we have symmetry here. And I'm just gonna select this one point, right click, and choose edit form. Now as I drag these points closer to each other, and you see them both move because we have symmetry set up. When I get them close to each other, this edit looks like it's going to work, but when I hit done, I get an error. Inventor is telling me my edges or faces may be crossing and the form cannot be converted into a NURB surface. I'll click OK, and let me just show you that again. I'll select this one, right click, choose Edit Form, drag this across, and as they get closer to each other, you might just notice up here a little warning sign. By selecting on this, I get some advice. I can see that when I click on these links, I get a highlighted surface. Inventor is telling me it has a problem. I'll hit close, I'll toggle onto boxy display, and you can see in boxy display that actually these points overlap each other by quite a long way. These darker shaded reasons are actually showing us the inside surface of this T-splines freeform surface. So the outside of the surface is purple, but the inside of the surface is dark gray. You usually can't see it except when you create non-manifold geometry. If I slide these back to a point where they're not crossing, we can see the warning sign goes away. I can hit done and this will convert. This maybe isn't quite what I'm looking for. These points aren't as close to each other as I would like, but now at least I understand why I can't get these points as close to each other as I like. And maybe I need to use a different strategy for my model. Okay, I'm gonna finish out this free form and I'm gonna to go to my next example. In this example, we're going to be looking at creases and we're going to be looking at star points. First, I'm going to bring up the crease edge command by right clicking and choosing crease edge. I'll crease this edge and what I want to notice is, although I creased this edge, both this edge and this edge are highlighted. Now, in fact, what I'd like to introduce is the rule of two. Although only one edge either side of my crease edge is highlighted, in fact, my crease is going to affect two edges and we can see that when we edit it. So I right click, choose edit form. I'm just gonna pull this one up a little bit. And you can see that although my crease is affecting one, two edges, the fall off actually comes into this one here. So from the edge that I've creased, the fall off covers one, two. So the rule of two, two faces or two edges, any edit we perform inside a T-spine surface will affect the next two edges or the next two faces around it. So what does this mean for us? Well, firstly, it means that if I was to crease this edge, it's going to affect this edge and this edge, which leads me into a star point. Now, this is going to have some unexpected behavior. Let me show you what happens. So I'm going to right click and choose crease edge. And what happens is not only is this edge and this edge creased, but the fall off leads into the third edge. And when you crease an edge leading into a star point, all the edges around the star point get creased too. And they have a fall off of two edges as well. So putting a crease too close to a star point can have some really unintended consequences. Now there's one last situation I'd like to show you which doesn't work out. Let me just step back. Okay, so this corner here is a star point. Now it only has three edges leading into it. A star point can have any number of edges. And in fact, a star point just means that the weighting between these three points is controlled by T-spline surface. So it can be anything it needs to be and that's how we create corners. This corner here also has three edges coming in, but this is a T point. The reason we know this is a T point is because this edge coming in is at 90 degrees to this edge here, and that behavior will stay with this. So T point, star point. Now let's see what happens when we crease this edge. I can crease this edge, and in fact there's no error. So that looks good. And in fact I can grab it, and I can choose edit form, and I can begin to manipulate it, and this all looks like it's working. And if you've tried T-Splines in Fusion 360, this does work inside Fusion 360, but currently not inside Inventor. And again, we have this warning pop up. So I can select this and I can see that Inventor has a problem with this surface and this surface. Let's close this and choose done. 
once again we have this problem it pops up and says this surface cannot be converted to a NURB surface so I'm going to hit OK it's going to move back and if we really did want a crease here we'd have to subdivide this face and this face so that the crease can run along it OK so that's the rule of two that's creases and star points always try and keep your creases two faces or two edges away from a star point I've got one last example to show you and this is about transition so this is how smooth our transition is between one surface and the other so I'm going to right click in here I'm going to choose edit form right click again I'm going to make sure I've got the extrude turned on select this surface here and I'm going to grab this and give it a pull so what that does is creates a star point this time a five edge star point which allows us to extrude this boss in the middle now the rule of two shows us that this face here is affecting this face and this face. As I pull this boss up, we're actually affecting pretty much the whole of the top of this surface. So let me just do Control Z and Control Y, Control Z, Control Y, and you can see how that works. You can see how we're affecting things quite a long way away from the boss we created. So how do we isolate that? Have the boss, but not affect too much of our surrounding surface. And there's a little trick I want to show you. Okay, I'm going to make sure. I've got extrude still turned on. This is checked, so I know extrude is turned on. I'm going to select this face. I'm just going to filter this down to make it easier for you to see. So I'm going to choose just the scale markers and I'm going to select this scale marker here. This is the scale 2D, so it's going to scale in two dimensions flush with this surface. So I'm just going to grab and just give it a little tweak. And you can see that that's extruded some extra faces in there. Now, what this means is I can extrude this center face that I have selected. And I now have one, two faces. So that's going to just slightly isolate the selection that's going to be affected to this set instead of the whole set. So let's go back to our full manipulator and I've still got extrude checked. So I can grab this and pull this up now and see that I have this boss, but the fall off is much tighter, it's much sharper, and it's not affecting the rest of these quite so much. So if I hit done there, that's control Z, control Y, control Z, control Y. So you can see how that boss is now isolated from the rest of the shape. And we can control the sharpness of this junction here by choosing edit form, double click on the loop to edit, and then drag this loop up and down. So we can still have a very smooth fall off if we like, but we're not affecting so many faces across the rest of our form. Now I just want to show you that same trick one more time. Edit form, select a face, not the edges, just the face. Grab the 2D scale marker and a little pull. And in this case, what that's created is kind of a flat top on the top of our boss. Very handy tool, very handy tip to know.